Hi everyone, Leanne here. I hope you're doing well. The first part of this video is I'm going to introduce my fountain pens and the fountain pen superlatives, like my smallest pen, my largest pen, the oldest pen that I have, and the youngest pen that I have, my first pen, and my most recent. Um, and so I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to provide writing samples based on the pens that um, I picked for the superlatives and I'm inking them up with these lovely inks that I got from I.N. Domingo and I'll provide her Instagram handle. And then lastly, I'm going to provide ink swatches of the seven inks uh, later in the video. Like I said, they're all going to be time stamped, um, but I, I just thought it would be nice to have everything in one video versus, you know, separating them into three. Uh, but let me know what you think. So the inspiration behind this video was based on uh, this Instagram post that I saw from Dandelion Writes, and uh, it was just a really fun idea. You know, they had put down all of, you know, they basically lined up their pens based on what was the first pen that they acquired, the most recent pen they acquired. Um, also, I think it was like their smallest and largest pens. And then um, what I am also adding to the list is, let's see. Oh, I'm doing my least expensive and my most expensive fountain pen in my collection. And then also a favorite everyday carry pen that I have with me. So why don't, why don't we go ahead um, and get started here? So everything is in this pouch. Uh, this is a pouch that I got from Hurlstone. Um, and I've had this for a few months now and I really do enjoy it. I realize I probably need one that can hold more pens or that has more slots. It's a three slotted pen. And then uh, the other pens that have the clips, I just put them kind of in between, alternating between the slots. Um, so I have two here and then I also have three back here. And all these pens are the pens that are part of my superlatives list. The first fountain pen that I got was the Lamy All Star in black. This is made of aluminum and it's currently in a, or not even currently, it came as a fine point. This was the very first pen that I got. I think I even got it on Amazon. I was in Canada at the time on vacation and I got injured. And so I was basically on the couch, couldn't move for a whole week. And during that time I fell down the rabbit hole of fountain pens. And I thought, you know, a black is a safe color as my first pen. I picked a fine point. You can't go wrong with a fine point, fine nibbed pen. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is my first fountain pen. And I really do like it. Uh, I'm actually in the middle of getting rid of some of my other Lamy Safaris that I have. Um, I'm going to probably get rid of most, if not all of my Lamy Safaris. I'm going to keep this Lamy here, the All-Star. It feels good in my hand and I like the weight of it. It's not significantly heavy. It's not heavy at all, but it has a little bit more, you know, just weight to it than my plastic, my ABS plastic Lamy Safaris. So I'm definitely going to keep this one and partly because it was my first one as well. So that's my very first fountain pen. My most recent one is this pen. If any of you follow the virtual pen show on Instagram, you might have noticed this one. This is a fountain pen by Butterknife Creations and um, Inks and Anchors was selling this pen. And she got me when she said, you know, it's black and white, but if you look at it closely, the photos don't do it justice and neither does this video, by the way. But if you look at it closely, there are specks of blue and purple in here as well. And it looks like abalone. So when she said abalone, she got me because uh, my holy grail pen, the pen that I am dreaming to get is um, a Leonardo Memento Zero Grande in abalone. Uh, I can't afford that. Or maybe it's I choose not to spend um, my precious money on that Memento Zero Grande, maybe not yet, or perhaps I'll save. And not only that, it, it it's in very limited quantities. And so uh, I don't even know if they're being sold anywhere right now. So I might have to just wait and 
try to find it on eBay. Um, but anyway, so I thought this would be just the perfect pen to um, be my, I don't know, just to hold that spot for me as I wait for my Holy Grail pen. This is really pretty. It is, uh, I believe it's in a broad nib. So that's my most recent pen. And I got this um, just last week. Or no, I got it earlier this week. My smallest pen is, now I, I don't know. Well, so the smallest pen that I have is a Quebeco Classic Sport. And it's, uh, this is a white one. I also have an olive green and navy blue and a burgundy one as well. And this one is in the broad nib. So it is my smallest pen. When it's capped like this, I would even say that my Traveler's Company brass pen in the factory green model is smaller than the Quebeco Classic Sport. So I would say these are very much my two smallest fountain pens. But when you post the Traveler's Company pen, and when you post this pen as well, you'll find that the Quebeco Classic Sport is shorter, shorter by maybe a centimeter. So technically, this would be my smallest fountain pen when it's posted. And then when the pens are capped, then my Traveler's Company brass fountain pen, my brass pen would be the smallest by a centimeter. No, not by a centimeter, maybe, ooh, I would say even an eighth of an inch. So there. And then um, my largest fountain pen probably has to be this butter knife this butter knife creations pen you might have seen my uh, recent uh, my last currently inked video this is the Birmingham pen company's model C I believe and when it's capped they look identical in length um, butter knife creations is probably longer by really just a fraction a fraction of gosh even like 1 16th of an inch uh, they're very comparable but then when you are to post the pen, you've got this, and this is huge. So actually when I write with this pen, I write with it unposted. This Butter Knife Creations pen, I don't even want to try to cap it. I mean, technically you can, but then it just becomes way too long. Uh, so then leaving it unposted, if I were to compare these two pens side by side, they're identical in length. However, if I am going to post the pens, then the Butter Knife Creations pen is definitely the longest. It's the largest that I have by about an inch, three quarters of an inch. So these two would be my largest pens. Oh, I just want to see if this, no, it doesn't, it doesn't screw. <laughs> it would have been pretty if it did. So this is probably my largest pen. A close second would be my Birmingham Pen Company in uh, the Model C. Okay, my oldest pen, it would be one of my vintage ones. And it would be, what is this called? It's my Parker Lady Dual Fold Ring Top in the Jade color. And uh, I had this featured in my vintage pen collection. This is one of four vintage pens that I received as a gift from my neighbor, Tina. And this does happen to, this happens to be my oldest pen because I believe this pen was manufactured um, in the 19, late 1920s, early 1930s, but I think definitely the late 1920s during the roaring 20s of um, in U.S. history. So that's very, very pretty. So that's my oldest pen. My youngest pen, I believe, would have to be this. This is the Laban Rosa in lilac. It's in a fine nib. In a fine nib. 
And uh, just looking online, I believe that this pen was manufactured or it was, um, it entered the market in 2022. So I believe this would have to be the newest or the youngest pen that I have in my collection. This is a pen that I got kind of um, impulsively after watching one of Karina's videos because she just talked so highly of this pen. Uh, she says, you know, you have to see it in person to just, um, just admire its beauty. And I think she's absolutely correct. Um, it's really pretty. It's a very wet writer. The one thing that I do have to say about this pen is you don't know. I don't notice it now, maybe because I taped it. But when I had it inked in another, um, when I had it inked the first time two months ago, um, it rattled as I was writing. So we shall see how this pen writes this month. But I didn't really turn to this pen very often since purchasing it because it rattled so much. So I ended up actually taking some washi tape and taping, securing my converter, um, the screw, this little area, because I thought this was making all the noise when I would write. So I applied some washi tape to secure it so it wouldn't make any tapping noises inside the barrel. So this is my least expensive pen is the Pilot Kakuno. And this is in a medium nib. And uh, this is part of like the family series. And I don't know if you could see that, but it's got, um, you know, all the Pilot Kakunos have faces on their nibs. And this one is supposed to be like the father. You can see the mustache and the tie. Um, I think it's really cute, but I really liked the, the color of the body here. So that's why I got this pen. And this pen runs for around 12, 11 to $12. Uh, a runner up, or technically, um, I do have a Pilot Petite, and that on jet pens is around $3.30, but I'm not including it in this superlatives list only because I don't really use that pen, um, but I do use the Kakuno all the time. It's really comfortable in my hand. I really like the grip section, I'm very comfortable. Okay. Now my most expensive pen, it's a Sailor Pro Gear Slim Shikiori in a 20, 21 karat gold nib. It's a bicolor nib. It's got silver and gold on here in a medium fine point. Um, and this is Kirisame, uh, which means an English autumn drizzle. I looked online and it looks like it retails for $360. Uh, this pen I received as a gift from a dear friend of mine. So uh, this is a pen that I, I don't even know if I would have ever purchased myself only because of the price tag. But um, my beautiful friend Teeks um, gifted me this pen. So I believe this happens to be my most expensive pen. So it's really, really pretty. It's got this uh, matte opaque body and then the finial is in this like translucent I would call it like a creamy peach um, plastic or resin, and it's got just the finest glitter particles in there, and I think it's just such a gorgeous pen. Okay, and then, can you guess, well, yeah, can you guess what my favorite everyday carry pen would be? Clue is it's in this lineup. If you can guess which one is my favorite everyday carry, here it is. This is my favorite EDC pen. Reason being, it's just so tough. It's absolutely durable. I don't worry about, you know, making sure that it's in a pen sleeve. It's just very, very durable, very tough. Um, I have this currently inked using um, one of these cartridges. It's a Caveco cartridge. So these are my superlative pens. Um, so this is my first pen, my most recently acquired pen. My smallest pen would be the Caveco Classic Sport. My largest pen would also be the Butter Knife Creations pen. My oldest is this Parker Lady Dual Fold Ring Top in the color Jade from the 1920s. And then my youngest 
pen would be the Laban Rosa in lilac, and I believe this was manufactured just last year in 2022. My most expensive would be the, pay the Sailor Pro Gear Slim Shikiori in Kirisame. My cheapest pen would be the Pilot Kakuno. And my favorite everyday carry would be this Traveler's Notebook, Traveler's Company brass pen in factory green. Now let's get on to the writing samples. Before the writing samples, I wanted to make sure that I provide ink swatches for each of these lovely inks. I received them via an ink swap with Ian Domingo. We met over Instagram and I reached out to her to see if she was interested and she was. Um, and these are all gorgeous inks. So thank you so much, Ian. This first ink is Roaring Cleaner's Deep Pine and I have to say it's like this mysterious green. Um, it's just, it's not, um, uh, that one of those glaring or bright greens it's just so understated and I call it like um, like a mysteriously luxe shade absolutely gorgeous and Diamine Wagner I have to say is probably one of my favorite inks out of the bunch it reminds me of J. Arabon's Vert Olive and it shades beautifully there's no shimmer in fact there's no shimmer in any of these inks and Roaring Klingner's Blue Murray is this bright electric blue that sheens as well. So deep pine and blue marae are beautiful sheening inks. Um, and it's just a gorgeous bright blue. And then Dominant Industry Manchurian Violet. This is an ink that I don't think I would have picked myself, but receiving it, I am in love. It's on the cusp of being not too dark, not dark at all, and not too light either. So it's a beautiful, understated, but bright pastel violet. And Pannonia Dungo Wasp is a color that surprises me. I wouldn't typically go for a yellow ink, but this one, ver you know, it verges more on the orange side. Um, so where, when it shades, it is very legible and it's just this beautiful yellow orange. Another ink that surprises me is Pannonia's, Pannonia's Devil Red. Um, I don't typically go to red inks, um, but this has been so lovely, particularly in the pen that I have it inked in, and you'll see that in my writing samples. And lastly, Diamine Honey Burst has been an ink that has been in my wish list or on my wish list for quite some time. Um, it's right up my alley when it comes to like warm autumnal inks and um, it's a beautiful shading ink. So as I do the close-ups here you can tell that none of them are shimmer inks. All of them are beautiful in that they shade. The inks that sheen are Dominant Industry, Manchurian Violet, the, Roar the Roaring Cleaner Deep Pine, and also Blue Murray. Now, as we're heading into the writing samples here, Butter Knife Creations, this is the pen that I most recently acquired. I received it just two or three days ago, and this is my first time inking it up. Um, it's a broad nib, and I have it inked with Roar and Klingner's Deep Pine. I really enjoy this pen and ink combination. Um, the, broad, the broad nib really showcases the shading that is really beautiful in this particular ink. So now I've got my Sailor Pro Gear Slim Shikiori in Kirisame, AKA Autumn Drizzle. And I have it inked with Dominant Industries Manchurian Violet. And you might remember that in the ink swatch, it showed up more bright, but in this writing sample, you can tell that it definitely leans a little bit more light, a little bit more pastel. Um, and I just have to say that this is a nice pen and ink combination. Uh, for my taste, it's a little too light, um, but we'll have to see by the end of the month. Next up is Le Le the Le Bon Rosa Lilac in a fine nib, and I have it inked with Pannonia's Dungo Wasp. For some reason, the ink doesn't flow very well in this pen, and the pen, in my experience, has been a really wet writer, so I'm not quite sure why um, it's not flowing well. I'm going to give it a try in another pen next month because um, in the ink swatch, I just think it's such a gorgeous color. Um, I just think it might be the unfortunate pen and ink pairing, but we'll have to see. Um, but once the ink gets going, um, it's a gorgeous yellow orange. Now we have the Traveler's Company Brass Pen in Factory Green. This is in a fine nib. 
and it's inked in Diamine Honey Burst. Unfortunately, I do have to say that I'm having flow issues with this pen and ink pairing as well for some reason. I wonder if it's because I got a little um, impatient and I didn't let the ink cartridge completely dry before filling it with Honey Burst. But otherwise, I know that this ink is absolutely gorgeous. So I'll figure it out and try it in a different pen next month. Now, this is my Pilot Kakuno in a medium nib, and I have it inked with Roar and Klingner's Blue Marais. Uh, this is probably one of my favorite pen and ink pairings for this month. The flow is just nice and smooth, and I just think it works so beautifully with the Pilot Kakuno. Uh, it's been a really nice writing experience. Another favorite of mine this month is Diamine Wagner inked in my Parker Lady Duo Fold in the color Jade. Uh, I just feel that the feedback is just really lovely. It's not scratchy, but you just get that nice contact with the nib and the paper. And uh, the ink color, it's just one of my favorites. I love olive greens, so definitely one of my faves. I miscounted how many pens I had, so I had one too many pens. So I have the Lamy All Star also inked in Manchurian Violet. And I don't know if you can tell on camera, but it, at least for me, what I've noticed is that the ink comes out a little bit more dark in the Lamy All Star versus in the Sailor Pro Gear. Um, and I really like the feedback that the All Star nib provides. Um, and I did three consecutive little ink smudges there just to make sure that I was smudging with a clean finger. Um, and now here I am lining up all the pens. Um, and I think once I had finished lining up all the pens, I realized that I was missing the Pannonia red ink. Okay, so here is my red ink. This is my Caveco Classic Sport. It's a white pen in a broad nib and I have it inked with Pannonia's Devil Red. I typically don't go for red inks, but I, I think it just has to be the pen and ink pairing. The flow is just really nice and it feels very lubricated. The whole writing experience is just very pleasant and um, I am really enjoying this red ink. As I'm lining up these pens, I just think about how excited I am to try out these pens and inks together, particularly Diamine Wagner, the Devil Red by Pannonia, and also both Roar and Klingner inks. Ian, thank you so much for swapping inks with me. These are absolutely gorgeous, and I love your ink tastes. These are absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Bye.